The thing I like most about stained glass is its permanence. It's going to be here for hundreds of years. Uh, if you buy a piece, your children will get it, their, their children, and just down the years. The first stage in doing any stained glass window is uh, getting a design that is right for you and your home. Once everybody's on the same page with the design, then we pick the colors for the glass because it's very important. You're going to live with this window, as I said, a long, long time. And once the colors are picked out and they're approved, then we can actually start building the window. For instance, on the iris, we'll lay out all the blue pieces, all the green pieces, all the background pieces. And once that's done, we can cut them all. Then we have to grind them all to fit to make sure they're all going to fit together in the window because it's very important. You don't want big gaps. You don't want, you know, too tight or you could break pieces. And then once they're all fit together and that's all the pieces, then you, get, you can foil them all. The beauty of glass is permanent, and it, what can you say, it's just beautiful. When I uh, first came down to Oklahoma, someone that worked for me, his wife, made me this hat. She wanted me to see where I was going to while never forgetting where I came from. The hardest thing for a fan to do is to live in another state of the team that just beat you. And, that, and that's very true. I mean, that is, that I've got a neighbor that'll make sure he's letting me know all the highlights if we lose. But winning, winning when you live in that state, mercy. There's, that's, that's, that's the feeling you hope for. He's a very obviously a Nebraska fan. He lets everybody know that. So when you set yourself apart and say, well, I'm for this team in Nebraska in particular, because we play them and it is a rivalry, um, he brings some good natured kidding on the way. My eighth grade son, my youngest son, wore a different Nebraska jersey every day this week to school you won't convert. You don't convert. You don't become an OU fan. You don't become an Oklahoma State fan. You were you were born, you were you, you were raised on, on Nebraska sports and you will you will root for Nebraska sports. Uh, regardless of what's happening, you will root for your Huskers until the end. You don't there is no converting. Okay, the big night's finally here. Come on, this is how we're gonna do it. Now I've got it set up, so Lance is gonna come in and interview Hillary and I about dating as young couples here in Lincoln and here in Nebraska in general and what there is to do. Just a bunch of bogus questions, really. And what we're gonna have is the waitress then, during the interview, the interview, the waitress will walk up, she'll have the flower and ask, is there anyone that would like to purchase a flower for the young lady? Well, because one year ago, this is where it all happened. And one year ago, I bought her a rose. So, right. she'll come out with the flower. I'll take the oh, flower. Sure. I'll go down to one knee. I'm about to pop the big question. Hillary, I love you very much. And I love you so much. But I want to know if you'll marry me. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> did you ask my daddy first? Yeah, I did. <laughs> he surprised me, and the fact that it's <laughs> he's the nicest person I've ever met makes it all the, all the better. <laughs>
It's 11.30 and most of you have gone to bed already, but here at the Lincoln Journal Star Newsroom, we're working feverishly to get the paper out to you first thing in the morning. We've just received the last negative from the newsroom and we're going to expose this on a plate for the printing press. Now this is a, a finished plate. This plate is ready to go on the press. We hang it on the press with, with magnets. It's a steel back plate, so we'll hang that on the press. Uh, we'll crank up the press and we start applying ink to the plate. Those image areas accept ink. Uh, it's a raised surface. It's a raised printing surface, so we apply ink to those raised surfaces and then that is, goes around the cylinder and each time it goes around the cylinder we apply ink and then that's applied to the paper. Once we release good copy, we'll release them to the packaging department. They go down, they go into a stacker, they're stacked up in the bundles. They then take that completed packaged paper, they put it into uh, counted out bundles. Those are strapped, wrapped, and uh, put a bundle top to identify which carrier or what location those papers go to. And those papers go to, to circulation. And there you have it. It's as easy as that. While you were sleeping, we put 85,000 newspapers on 85,000 doorsteps overnight. Well, 17 years in Nebraska was great. I had tremendous memories. Uh, God blessed uh, through that whole time. I was a part of three national championship teams. I would have never believed that that would have taken place prior to coming to Nebraska. So I, I got way more than I deserved, without a doubt. But the first half of my career, I would say my prayer was basically, God, um, would you, uh, could I use you to promote me in football? And the second half of my career uh, changed from this thing of worldly success to spiritual significance. And I began to pray, God, how can I use football to make your name famous? You gotta get used to catching from a lefty now, huh? Well, the firing for a lot of people um, meant that uh, the coaches were gonna be scrambling around. It could have been the, the worst thing that ever happened in their life. I know a lot of people felt that way for me, uh, whether they were Christians or not. In fact, even many Christians thought when I got into full-time ministry that I got a consolation prize. But um, quite frankly, they're so wrong because you can take a man's job, but you cannot take his purpose. That comes from God. I'm involved in a lot of things. The Fellowship of Christian Athletes, just heading up that ministry here in the state of Nebraska. I'm involved with uh, radio shows, Bill Dolman and I doing an ESPN local show, Christian show. And also, uh, I'm doing a lot of national stuff with Sports Spectrum. And so I, I'm looking for ways to communicate the message of Jesus Christ through the vehicle of sports. And God has been opening up some great, fun opportunities to do that. We're here today because we're very excited because my little brother Daniel Polson is coming home. He's been serving in Iraq for six months and we're waiting for our limo to come pick us up here in a few minutes. You guys ready? Yeah, let's, let's go! go. <laughs> I feel really great. Um, it may only be the first day of December, but as far as I'm concerned, it's Christmas Day. This is the best Christmas gift I could have ever gotten. I don't need anything else. Danny's going to be home. He's going to be safe. It's been six months since I've seen him. A lot of cards, a lot of letters, a lot of prayers, and my prayers have been answered. And um, I am just thank God for this day. <laughs> Home. <laughs> Tell us, how does it feel to be back? Feels awesome. I almost missed my flight, but I'm glad to see these guys. 
After seven months, I'm finally home. I'm just glad to have him back home. Well, I had a stroke on February 26, 2000, which, uh, as a musician, was was uh, an enormous challenge. And uh, my wife was really the impetus behind talking to Jeff about possibly constructing a one-handed instrument. I thought it was a terrible idea, but but um, anyway, she won out and proved herself right in the long run, as she usually does. David was depending on it at that time. He couldn't play an instrument at all, and it was his complete livelihood, so uh, I was determined that, that it could be done. A lot of people said that it couldn't be done. Uh, between David's need and my determination, it just had to be done, and so uh, time wasn't a factor. We just took all the time we needed. All people have a need to make music. I think making music is a, is a human characteristic that we all share, and I think a lot of music teachers do believe that. And I think just because you get sick or injured doesn't change that need. When I got sick, I thought I was the unluckiest person in the world. And then, uh, and then I've had this project to work on, which is really giving me something to focus on. And at this point, it's extending to helping other people who are sick and injured, which is very exciting, and obviously it's a wonderful thing. Okay, magic needs to start happening. Everybody be on, on the rails, be ready. The story of the Nutcracker surrounds itself around a little girl named Clara. You hear something. Good, good, good reaction. It is, and it's amazing. It's, being Clara is something you dream about since you're a little girl. I was a mouse and I always dreamed of being Clara and this being a really big year, it's, it's amazing to get the chance to do this. When you first get out there, you're really nervous and you see all the people, but you kind of get lost in the story and you get lost in, you know, what's going on on the stage and you have to think the story in your head so it goes out to the audience so they know what you're thinking and what you're trying to portray. Claire consists of acting, dancing um, constantly. You, you don't get much of a break. You're on stage and you have to set the scene for the whole show. Just working hard, it's, it's all because you know you get to perform and they don't see how hard you work and you just make it look easy, even though it, it's not easy. 